House Democratic lawmaker Lloyd Doggett of Texas has become the first in the party to publicly call for President Joe Biden to step down as the party's nominee for president. The reason he cited was Biden's debate performance against Donald Trump. This is representative of the worry amongst uh, Democrats about whether 81-year-old President Joe Biden is up to the job itself or the task of defeating Donald Trump. In fact, previous presidential campaigns offered lessons. The lesson is that incumbents trying to win over their parties often struggle to win again. Going back to Lyndon B. Johnson in 1968, several presidents eligible for re-election faced significant primary challenges or questions about whether they should run again. George H.W. Bush, Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford pushed forward and won their nominations, only to be defeated in November. Johnson opted to withdraw and Democrats lost anyway. Biden had no real primary fight, but his allies now acknowledge how poorly the president performed in his debate against Trump. They fretted privately about Biden's ability to serve until he is 86 and more immediately whether he can keep the job by defeating the Republican former president himself, a 78-year-old saddled with a felony conviction, other indictments and voter concerns over his values and temperament. The warning from history is ominous. Incumbent presidents still working to consolidate and reassure their own party this late in a first term, typically do not get a second. Let's look at the instances. George H. W. Bush in 1992. An Ivy League educated Bush was a moderate Republican and never a favorite of the Christian right or anti-tax small government activists. Bush appealed to the right flank ahead of his victory in 1988 saying, read my lips, no new taxes. He was riding high in 1990 after a quick U.S. military victory that drove Iraq and Saddam Hussein from oil-rich Kuwait. Within months, though, Bush broke his tax pledge. The U.S. economy began to falter, albeit mildly in retrospect, and the president grew vulnerable. Primary challenges emerged, notably uh, Steve Forbes, an anti-tax crusader, and commentator Pat Buchanan, a Christian conservative. Bush won every primary, but many by unimpressive margins. Buchanan, rather than endorsing Bush enthusiastically, used his GOP convention speech to enlist religious conservatives in a culture war against Clinton, liberals and secularism. A standard Republican rhetoric even today, but a more divisive tone alongside Bush's talk of a kinder, gentler nation. Democratic challenger and Arkansas governor Bill Clinton hammered Bush as out of touch with middle-class Americans and billionaire Ross Perot entered the contest as an independent. On election day, 62.6% of voters opted against Bush. Clinton won 370 electoral votes, the second highest total for any Democrat since 1964. The other time the incumbent fought for survival was with Jimmy Carter in the Oval Office. A former Georgia governor, Carter, was a moderate southerner from outside the liberal democratic power structure. His 1976 nomination and eventual victory over the Republican incumbent Ford was less about ideology though, and more about Carter's promise never to lie to Americans who were disillusioned after Vietnam and a Watergate scandal. Legislative successes followed, but Carter rankled Washington Democrats. Global inflation, U.S. unemployment and interest rates climbed, and Carter's popularity fell. Senator Ted Kennedy mounted a primary challenge in 1980, inspiring young progressives like those who had once adored his slain older brothers. Carter famously said of Kennedy, I'll kick his ass. The president won enough delegates for the nomination, even as the Iran postage crisis compounded his problems. Yet in defeat, Kennedy used his convention speech more to rouse his own supporters rather than reconcile with the incumbent. Against Republican Ronald Reagan, Carter carried just six states and Washington, D.C. Now let's travel back to 1968. Ford, Carter and Bush are not perfect parallels for 2024. 
Biden did not draw a credible primary challenge. And even with the debate fallout, he has a well of personal goodwill across his party. Perhaps the best comparison then is Johnson. The assassination of John F. Kennedy thrust Johnson into the Oval Office in November 1963. Known as LBJ, the colorful Texan trounced Republican Barry Goldwater in 1964. Johnson amassed the most sweeping legislative record since FDR, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Voting Rights Act of 1965, Medicare and Medicaid. But Johnson vastly expanded US involvement in Vietnam and lied to the country in the process. He also found himself unable to shepherd Americans through social changes of the era. Presidential campaigns were shorter then, so it was not until March 31, 1968 that Johnson mulled his sagging standing and announced his intentions. After weak showings in early primaries, Johnson said in an Oval Office address, I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. What followed though is not necessarily encouraging for Democrats hoping to hear the same from Biden. New York Senator Robert F. Kennedy, whose son Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is mounting an independent presidential bid this year, joined a spirited Democratic nominating fight and secured momentum by winning the California primary in June. But he was assassinated in Los Angeles minutes after his victory speech. Democrats were left with the Rackus Convention in Chicago, also the site of the 2024 convention. They chose Vice President Hubert Humphrey to take on Nixon, the Republican former Vice President who had lost to John F. Kennedy in 1960. Neither Nixon nor Humphrey were broadly popular and the resulting general election was very close. Nixon outpaced Humphrey by about uh, 500,000 votes out of 73 million that were cast and he secured 301 electoral votes. Seven months after a beleaguered Democratic president stood down, his party met defeat. These stories of men who couldn't keep their party behind them could be a lesson for the Democrats even this year. Do tell us what you think about this video in the comment section and for more news updates, subscribe to India Today.